I want to live an intentional life. And most of the time, I think I'm pretty good at that. But I like information. And you might be thinking, hey, me too. What's wrong with that? Well, I like information and it's way too easy for me to get it. So easy that most of the time when I go for a simple search, it turns into something else. I spend hours consuming endless amounts of content. It's kind of like going for a sip of water, but getting a fire hose instead. And the worst part is I usually never even do anything with all that information. I've noticed that lots of times I end up forgetting most of what I've consumed, even if it felt inspiring or engaging in the moment. I have an idea on how to combat this, but before I tell you what it is, I want to tell you the story of an 18th century French philosopher by the name Denis Diderot. Denis spent his early adulthood studying law, but abandoned that to pursue things he was more interested in, like literature, philosophy, and language. He spent many years writing and teaching and translating to earn a living, but never really made a lot of money. In spite of that, he led a pretty remarkable life. He wrote some pretty influential essays, including one about teaching the blind how to read about a hundred years before braille was even invented. His most influential work was his contribution to the most comprehensive encyclopedia in French history. I know, exciting stuff. He had, in a sense, fame, but no fortune. And he seemed content with that. Later in life, through means that aren't exactly clear, he acquired a luxurious scarlet robe. And after that, he fell prey to something that's now known as the Diderot effect. You see, as soon as he saw this beautiful new garment in the context of all of his other possessions, he noticed how out of place it was. He was made uneasy by the lack of coordination and unity in his living space, and started developing the urge to replace his old things to match the beauty of his new robe. He became reactive in his consumerism. He began to notice a void in his life that he hadn't seen before. The Diderot effect describes the spiral of consumption of things that we don't need. Lots of times we buy things we don't need because we think it will help us become something that we want to be. It's why you get a gym membership and never go, or buy kale just to throw it away. I think this also lends an explanation to why we endlessly scroll, mindlessly watch TV, and forget most of what we consume. It's reactionary consumption. Just as buying new things often leads to buying more new things, consumption often leads to more consumption. And all of this mindless consumption leaves little room for creation. And people need to create. It's part of what makes us human. I think consumption and creation work like a balance. We have inputs and we have outputs. In order to maintain a healthy relationship with either of them, they need to be somewhat equal. But we're overloading ourselves with consumption. To try and fix this, I'm going to spend the next week trying to balance the scales. Here are the rules of my experiment. For every input, I'll have an output. That means every YouTube video, book, article, TikTok, anything. It can be as simple as just a note to myself, or a comment to the creator, or something a little more complicated. But each thing that I consume needs to prompt some sort of creation. No exceptions. Okay, first exception. Okay, I'm adding another exception. Okay, maybe some exceptions. Okay, so today is day one of my little experiment. I've got my notebook and my pen right here. This is so I can write down my reaction to any kind of content that I'm consuming or even coming into contact with. I'm expecting this to be kind of difficult because I think we consume a lot of information pretty unconsciously. So 
turning that all conscious, I, it's going to be time consuming and it's probably going to get kind of difficult to remember to do this just because I do it so automatically at this point. Like you sit down on the couch, you open Instagram or something like it's kind of a reflex at this point. So we'll see how this goes. I think having this on me at all times will be really helpful. I think it's a shame that I run into so many inspiring things in the world, but then never actually turn it into anything. Like. What's inspiration for if you don't use it for anything? That's kind of the goal with this experiment is to capture all of the inspiring moments and channel it into something creative. So yeah, wish me luck. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll check in. All right, uh, welcome to my messy floor. Today was day one and it went pretty well. Journey and I went to this really cool bookstore, obviously lots of inspiration there. And so I made some notes where I could and then bought the books that were inspiring. I was also more aware than usual of all of the different inputs that hit us without us really knowing about it. For example, signs on the highway and music in the background. Like these are all influences on our life, conversations with random people. These are all things that hit us as we're going throughout our day and we have obviously no control over that, but oftentimes we don't really realize they're happening. So it was an interesting experience to be a little bit more conscious about these. I don't really have any super meaningful conclusions about it yet, but um, it was definitely an interesting first day. So today is day two of my little experiment and I'm noticing that one of the unintended consequences of forcing myself to say comment on YouTube videos that I watch is that I've ended up having actual interactions with the people whose content I normally just consume. So for example, just last night I was watching a video and I was like, oh wow, this is super useful. So I told them that. So this morning they responded to me and they were like, wow, that's so great to hear. And I know that's a really simple interaction, but it feels really good because most of the time I would have just took that information and ran away with it and maybe applied it to my life, maybe not, uh, but the creator would never know. Something I've noticed stepping into the YouTube space myself is that interacting with people is like the most fulfilling part of it. So I think beyond this experiment, I will absolutely keep commenting on pretty much every video I watch. It's just been a really insightful and exciting new element to watching YouTube videos. Something else I've noticed today is that by forcing myself to interact with the things that I'm consuming, I feel like I'm really connecting with things better, and I seem to be putting myself into the world more. Okay, I'm adding another exception, and that is signs on the road. Billboards are technically consuming, but there's no way I can possibly respond to every single billboard. That's just not feasible. But side note, I am noticing how many advertisements I come across throughout my day. Alright, it's kind of late, but today has been day three, and the experiment is going great so far. Last night, Journey and I watched a TV show on Netflix just to kind of wind down for the night. And I noticed that obviously since I was taking notes on whatever I was watching, I paid way more attention to like whatever was going on. And this was basically like a HGTV show, you know, it was like a home renovation show. But I was paying attention to like story structure and the way they animated things, just trying to get ideas for like future videos or whatever. And it was crazy, like something that would normally be just something you throw on and watch, I was like really paying close attention to. Okay, so I'm running into the first kind of negative of this challenge, which is I'm sitting here editing and things are rendering because I'm working with some effects that are taking a while. And while it does take a while for these things to render, it's not long enough to switch my focus to anything meaningful. And so generally what I do in these times, just like open TikTok and scroll for a little bit and maybe laugh at something, <laughs> But like with this challenge, if I open TikTok, then I have to deeply interact with everything that I consume. And I don't really want to do that because that takes a little bit too much focus. And so, I don't know, I guess that's kind of the first thing that I'm coming across that I don't love about this. So today was super interesting because I was trying some new effects while I was editing and I didn't really know how to do what I was trying to do. So I looked up some tutorials like I always do when that happens and it was difficult because I had to interact with each of these videos because that's technically content that I'm consuming. 
and it kind of slowed me down. It wasn't ideal. I think it's great to thank people when they make something that is super helpful for you, and I really enjoyed that process. Like, anytime I found something that was actually what I was looking for, I left a comment thanking the person, and it was great. I even got some responses on that. But when it wasn't what I was looking for, it kind of just slowed me down because I didn't want to be like, hey, this isn't what I wanted. It was still a good video. It just wasn't what I was looking for, but I still had to interact with it. I like to move quickly while I'm trying to edit because if I go look up a tutorial, that's taking me out of my editing flow and I want to stay in that as much as possible. So yeah, it just, it wasn't ideal. Uh, I think that experience kind of helped me realize the limitations of this experience, but I think overall it's still really positive. Okay, so I'm starting to realize as a result of this experiment that we as a society have developed these filters that are constantly working and they sort of filter out all of the bad information that we don't need. And during this experiment, since I'm having to interact and respond to any kind of inputs, I'm not really able to use those filters. So it's like a barrier has been taken away. And so I'm having to interact with information that I'm not necessarily looking for. And I think there's pros and cons to that. On the positive side, it's forcing me to be a little bit more open to discovering things. But on the negative side, if I come across something that isn't necessarily what I was looking for, I still kind of have to interact with it for longer than I probably would have normally. Which I guess is nice because I'm giving things the benefit of the doubt. But as you know, there's a lot of content on the internet that's just not really worth your time. And I think moving on from it and just forgetting about it entirely is kind of a useful thing. But in this case, I'm not really able to do that. All of this is to say that we have these filters and I think they're valuable. And with that, I think in the future, after this experiment is over, I will probably continue parts of it and drop other parts of it. And this will be one of the parts that I drop because having that filter up all the time is really helpful. It allows us to get to what we actually want to find. Okay, so it's been a couple weeks since the initial experiment and I just want to talk about some of the things that I've learned and some of the things that I'll be continuing to do and some of the things that weren't so helpful. So overall, I thought that it was really interesting to have a strict set of guidelines for consuming content. It just made things feel a little bit more structured and meaningful. And I really enjoyed interacting with everything that I was consuming. It made it feel a lot more intentional and the things that I consumed actually stuck with me for a lot longer than they normally would. However, I ran into issues when it came to shorter form content. And here's why I think that is. Lots of short form content these days automatically starts playing. So you don't actively choose to engage with specific pieces of content. You engage with the platform and you're automatically fed content through that. This is in contrast to things like YouTube or say a movie because you're actively seeking out that specific piece of content. It's two different things. I think short form content is really good for discovery. You can engage with lots of different things and a wide variety of different things in a relatively short amount of time. However, this type of content doesn't go very deep into any one thing. So I think having a healthy balance of both of those types of content is really important. So I think going forward, I'll allow myself to be open to discovery and not be so strict about interacting with those pieces of content, but rather once I've decided I really want to interact with something, then I'll be a little bit more strict about turning that into some sort of output later on. Mm -hmm.